Now, it's not so obvious at first, but variables are basically values. So all the existing operators you've already learned about work with variables. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Remember how before we did one plus two and it was three? You can do the same thing when you say A is one and local B is two, right? And then you can say print one plus two would be three, but you can also say A plus B. So these variables are gonna replace the value there when the operator is saying, yo, who are you and who are you? I need to add you two together. It's gonna look at what that variable equals and it's gonna pop that value out and then do the operation for you using that operator. So we'll both get two prints, both saying three. The first is when we hard coded the numbers there and the second is when we actually use the variables. So variables can replace any operation you're doing and you can do it multiple times, which is a nice thing about variables because let's get rid of this for a second. So notice it's gonna equal three, three times, right? It's gonna print the same values three times. The cool thing about that is that if you change, let's say the variable in one place, it changes it everywhere else. And so that allows you to write things once and then have it affect everything else. So for example, if you're building a game, you wanna affect the power of a weapon, for example, or you wanna increase how much a health pack improves your health, you can set that variable in one place and everyone else will use it no matter how they're using it, whether they're adding, subtracting, doing functions with it, things like that. And so that's with numbers. You can do the same thing with text as well. So you can say name, let's just say first is Jesse and last name. And then if you wanna add these things together, we can do first, and then remember with strings, you gotta use the dot dot to add them together. So we'll do a blank and then do last and then print it out and it'll assemble that string together, Jesse Warden, with the space in it. And these variables work with those operators. So whatever variable type is, it's assumed that you've kind of memorized that this is a string, whatever else. If I were to use a plus, for example, because I didn't know that you know first and last were a string and I went to run it, then it would give me an error and say, no, you're trying to do ads on a string. That's not how strings work. You need to use concatenating operators like dot dot, right? So again, the variables work, but you can still have the same problems if the types don't match up if you're trying to do things with them. So just be aware, variables are cool and that you can use any of the operators and play with them elsewhere, but you need to still keep in your head what it is. So you'll find sometimes people will say like health and if you play any video games, you kind of know that health is probably a number, right? But when we say weapon, what is that? <laughs> is it a table? Is it a value? Something like weapon damage would be a little bit more indicative that it's probably a number. If you really don't know, you can say weapon damage number. And there is nothing wrong and everything right with being verbose, right? There's nothing wrong with making a really long variable name. The only cost is that you have to write more text, so it takes a little bit longer, and read, there's a lot more to read here. It's better to have this, when you read it, understand it, because a lot of what we do in coding is reading. So picking those variable names to indicate type is actually a common practice in dynamic languages if you don't have type. You don't have this problem in Luau, and you don't have it with smaller code bases. So pick your style, go with it, don't stress it. Just try to think about the variable name indicates the type.